Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of KDE News and before we start off with that let me send you an important message we need you we need your skills so as you know or might not know in about a month uh, Plasma 5.14 will be released and we need some people helping out with preparing the release so this is a job for the promotion group which uh, is here the page to get involved if you have any skills i don't know writing announcements making videos animations especially blender animations would be awesome please uh, well message me personally first and also the promo group as a whole we are trying to recruit some people that could help us during the release so if you have any skills related to promotion that can be i don't know video ma video making sorry anything like that super useful please hit us up uh, up until now we've always done some cool stuff but very inconsistently as an example um, two versions ago we had uh, animations written in html and css done by me and then before that there was a very cool video uh, done in blender and before that there was another video made with html and css plus video editing, editing later so if you know how to do uh, this kind of stuff when well please help us if you are interested in joining kde development this is a great time then let's get into news so the first one which is super uh, exciting is that finally we do have root file operations in dolphin and this was asked for a lot of time and now it's there so you can do uh, operations that require a uh, root and you will be asked for your password so i'm not going to show you this because it's very simple but i just wanted to let you know that this is in let's get into another i'm not going to show you but it's interesting to know which is that this bug has been fixed and that is add how to use instructions in krunner plugin descriptions now if you open up krunner there will be a uh, question mark inside of it and you, if you press that you will be able to see the list of runners and how to use them so it's pretty useful and now for the less important news but the more interesting ones i'm going to show you uh, a couple of uh, three uh, sorry four sorry even more merge requests or commits and tell you why they're there what do they do and how they're implemented so you can understand a bit more how uh, development works and how to contribute to kde the first one is this which the system tree doesn't follow the panel opacity okay so if you have a panel with adaptive opacity it will be transparent when you have a window but opaque when that window is maximized so What's the issue? If you maximize a window, the panel is opaque, kickoff is opaque, system tray isn't. Why that does why did that happen? And that was honestly very weird for me to see this back because I implemented part of that feature, a good part of that feature, and I remember testing this and it worked. So what went wrong? So let's see the actual fix, which is this one, and the merge request is somewhere but i don't see it so this is the change it's a one line change that fix it so from now on the system tray will follow the opacity of the panel which is nice so this is the line what does it say okay background hints plasmoid containment display hints and plasma core types that's all fully covered okay and then there's a question mark which is an inline if so we are checking this and what does checking this means so basically we're taking the containment display hints which is a variable which uh, has uh, how to explain hints so basically uh some hey, this is not easy so i've got a number which is made up by bits and every single single bit has a meaning and as an example there is a bit that says whether the desktop is fully covered or not this is bitwise logic so display hints this number with a lot of hints on what's going on with the display one of which is whether the desktop is fully covered or not which is what is interesting for us so we're saying if the uh, desktop fully covered bit which is saved in this variable is on in this variable and this is what the end operator does 
uh, very simply but put obviously then plasma core dialog solid background use a solid background otherwise plasma core dialog standard background use a standard background okay so if the desktop is fully covered then go solid else standard why is this needed and uh, it's a bit weird okay so what's the logic behind this okay so fun fact while I was preparing to explain this line of code, I was thinking about it. And the more I think about this, the more wrong it sounds. And I think there has been some mistake here, but let me explain nevertheless um, how this idea worked in general. So you have um, the desktop with uh, the plasma panel, the applets inside of the panel and then the system tray. The system tray is very weird as an applet because it is an applet itself, but inside of it, there are more applets, which means that you have the containment with the panel and inside of the panel, you have your applets. Inside of the panel, you have the system tray. Inside of the system tray, you have more applets. Weird. Okay, so uh, when the desktop is fully covered, well, you get this containment display hints uh, set to the display, the desktop, sorry, is indeed fully covered. And that's set somewhere in the panel. Let's not get into details because honestly, I don't even remember them right now. I should look more into it. But this variable, of course, it's set such, such that the desktop is indeed fully covered. And this holds true for the panel the widgets that are inside of the panel, but not this instant tray because technically it's a containment container, sorry, in itself. So what needs to be done is this variable to be transferred from the panel to the system tree and then in the system tree, read again and set again. Now this is completely automatic for all applets because they're inside of the panel except the system tray, which is not a st standard applet, but a containment in itself. So that's the idea behind this. So this line of code, in theory, should be in the panel regarding all applets. So there is um, a QML file. QML is the programming language these things are written in. There is a QML file regarding the default applet, like the default applet behavior that all applets have. That says, okay, if you're inside of a panel and the desktop is fully covered, then use the solid background if adaptive is, uh, of course, turned on. But, you know, stuff inside of the system tray doesn't get this. So this variable has to be passed through and it has to be set again in the system tray. Not in all applets, but in the system tray. So this didn't look like, this uh, isn't obvious. Like. In theory, you shouldn't need this line because it feels like, okay, system tray is part of the panel, so it just works. It doesn't. We need this line. Next one, change open new instance to open new window. Uh, well, this is just a string change to make things a bit more obvious. So if you have a list of applications and you right click one, now open new instance, instance is open new window. And this is just a way to make the interface less jargonish in its words because instance is a bit harder for the very new users compared to window. How was this done? Okay, so it's the patch is here. This is the whole patch. It's super easy. So what you do is that you go into the task manager, which is what you're changing, and then you open up kfind. If you want to do something like this, you put kfind to tell uh, it and tell it, sorry, to find the string of text that you're trying to change, which is opens a new instance, instance. And then you search and kfind automatically finds what file you're looking for by magic. You open that file and change opens a new instance to open a new window. Same year, start a new instance, open a new window. Uh, the icon is also changed. List add symbolic is uh, changed with window new. If you need a list of icons in KD Plasma, install Cutefish. Cutefish has all of the icons and it also it also tells you the name names of them. So you know what this is and you know what this is. And it's pretty easy to find one. You just go into Cutefish. Am I covering again the part? No, no, I think you're, you're seeing this. I'm not covering it with my face. You're seeing this. So as I was saying, 
you go into Qt Fish and search for uh, Window New and you discover that there is indeed an icon which is called Window New. So this was super easy and if, ever, if you ever need to change well, a string of text, then that's how you do it. Next one, auto restart after installing updates. So this was a bug and it was implemented in this commit, which is this one. How was it implemented? The patch is here. So first of all, reboot now. Now this cover, which is, you know, the application that manages a uh, software for um, KD Plasma, KD, let's say, uh, or I mean the distributions that use it just to be more precise. Okay, so now the object I don't know what discover object is, but it's something related to discover clearly has a new function, which is called reboot now. And what does it do? Well, it creates a method call through the uh, QD boost, which is org free desktop login one in org free desktop login one, org free desktop login one manager reboot. What's this? Okay. So this is QD boost and it's a bit of magic. I still uh, regard QD boost to be magic debus in general, but the idea of this is that this uh, initiates a um, uh, reboot and you set the arguments to be true so that it's interactive. So reboot also as an argument. And then you ask the connection with debus to call that method uh, async. So it doesn't actually stop here for this function and returns back. This function simply reboots the computer. That's easy. You also define that this new function exists. Interest, inter, interestingly enough, there is already a reboot function, which is similar, but uh, let me see if I manage to actually show it to you. Can I, hello, can I, here? It's very similar. It's prompt reboot instead of reboot and uh, prompt, prompt reboot, I think that asks you if you want to reboot so reboot now is just, please reboot now, regardless of the user, I guess. And uh, then we get back to a QML uh, file, which is the more UI type of, type of thing is. And we get this uh, tool button, which is a select all. Uh, and uh, well, this button was here already is the select all buttons for updates, but now it's only visible if you don't need to reboot. If you need to reboot, you can select all. So basically this button as well, which is select none, this button is just invisible in case you need to reboot. And now there is a checkbox, a new checkbox that is only visible if you need to reboot saying restart automatically after update has been completed. So the idea here is if you need a reboot, then show a, a checkbox saying, do you want to reboot uh, sorry, after the update has been completed? And then state change script, script if reboot at end checked. If you check reboot at end, then reboot now. Uh, I guess this uh, actually, uh, yes, this, uh, uh, this uh, actually gets only called when uh, the update is finished, I'm pretty sure. Not sure why looking at the code, but I don't know every part of uh, code of every part of KDE. So uh, this is uh, the idea though. Last one. Add ability to open with the current working directory. This is for console. And now uh, you can just right click console, open with dolphin like, and you can open the directory you're in. And it's a rather simple um, merge request. The general idea, you get this current URL, you check if it's a local file and it's, so you get that. Otherwise from local file home path, you get the local file URL and you open it with K file item. I mean, that's uh, easy stuff to get the current URL you're inside of um, in a console. And then list properties of that item, Q scope, what's this? Yes, sorry, you're creating a new, let me zoom in a bit more. You are creating a new, where is it? You're creating a new K file item actions uh, for the pop-up, which is above a new ac action for the context menu. The idea it is set item list properties, blah, blah, blah. Insert open with actions to, we're actually adding the open with action here. Uh, we are adding it to pop-up 
actions. So the actions of the pop-up that we have, the context menu. Value for null pointer. I'm not sure what the value for null pointer is. Honestly, maybe the position of the um, new element inside of the pop-up, maybe. Inside of the pop-up, queue string list, queue app, desktop file name. No idea what this is, honestly. And then simply put. Never mind, there's no simply put here, it's complex stuff. Let's switch to the last one. I wanted to showcase a bit uh, this blog post by Carl Schwann, which I surely pronounced incorrectly. And the idea here is more KD apps, which is cool. So he is working on some new pretty cool KD applications and he talks about them here very shortly. I suggest you to actually read this because it's very interesting. There is Tokadon, which is a client for, what's the name again? I forgot again, uh, Tokadon, the Mastodon, Mastodon. It's a Mastodon client. If you use Mastodon, it's the alternative to Twitter, sort of. Then there is Ashomatic, uh, the name of which I absolutely love, with, uh, which check is, um, checksums of files. You can also compare them, verify Ash, and generate them based on the file. There is Whale, which is a very simple Fire Explorer. So, you know, Dolphin, Dolphin is awesome, but there is some interesting interest in seeing if a file explorer could be made in Kurigami. Right now is nothing like that will be shipped to you tomorrow, but it's something that's being in development. There is Calendar, which I talked about so many times. So next one, Pelican, which is a very, um, again, simple, similarly to Whale uh, application to check emails. Uh, so similar to Kmail, but in QML. Again, trying to rewrite something that exists inside of Kurigami. And finally, uh, Nextcloud Talk, which is a client for Nextcloud Talk. So if you use that, then there is client which is being developed. All cool apps, and it's awesome that Kurigami makes it uh, easy enough to create application that we see so many of them coming up, being created. So to recap, cool stuff. I showcased some of it, look at the code. In theory now I should have all the cool animations with the uh, Patreons and stuff. I don't have them right now, sorry about that. I just uh, received a new computer and still setting everything up. So in theory you should be receiving this video as full HD and 30, 30 FPS, but maybe I could do even 60 in the future. And if you're using this, if you're watching this, sorry, in peer tube, uh, then it, it's probably still 720p and I'll try to fix that. But overall, new recording setup, new stuff, new code, new apps. Cool, please help the promotion. Thank you.